Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Flash Episode 9 video. Merry Christmas to everyone. The writers went way above and beyond the call, putting in as many Easter eggs as possible. Really big Easter eggs. And we had a really awesome cameo from the original Flash series, so I'll explain everything. So just careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet, but starting with top five moments. Number five, the reverse Flash has been back for a while. I just love that Cisco tried to call him the opposite Flash. Greatest almost name ever. Maybe just because the reverse Flash is such a big character. Joe said it to Eddie, but the man in yellow, as they called him for most of the episode, had been searching for something for weeks. Really that Mercury Labs tachyon generator. I think that in combination with the Star Labs treadmill will be the stand-in for the cosmic treadmill. He also directly challenged Barry, which is just a little bit different from the Professor Zoom character in the comic books. He was just a little bit more evil. The Hunter Solomon Zoom was the one that was pushing the Flash to be better, in his own really perverted, twisted way. At some point, all the reverse flashes go a little bit nuts. If you were a little bit confused about what was happening when they were fighting in the stadium, there were lights flashing around them while they were standing still in front of the camera. It just implies that there are two versions of their characters in that time and space. Like the older versions of themselves are from another time and place, chasing each other around, just like they were around Barry's mother's murder. Time is a weird thing. They have yet to explain how they're going to treat it in the time causality loop. Previously, I had thought that there was more than one version of the reverse flash that we would see on screen. And as we saw during the episode when they captured the reverse flash in the tachyon generator and he pulled Harrison Wells in and started beating on him, there really were two of them. Like that wasn't him punching himself. The real question is, is what is his next move and how often is he going to appear in the back half of the season? Number four, the Barry Iris Eddie ship turns into a full blown triangle. Most people don't like the romancy part of the episodes, but this is really important for the Flash rebirth storyline. If you have read the comic books and you know what happens to Hunter Zolomon's character, I do feel like Eddie Thawne is Hunter Zolomon, just with a different name. They're just simplifying things a little bit and making him part of the Thawne lineage. I think in order to drive a rift between their three characters by the end of the season, they started Barry on the path, you know, telling Iris, I love you. We've seen a little bit of tension building, Eddie's starting to pick up what Barry's doing. I think they're just going to build and build to the end of the season when they have a big blowout. Hunter Zolomon and Wally West, I mean it was a different flash in the comics, but they're just, you know, like I said, simplifying things. They were good friends before they had their big falling out, and he went on to become the, you know, really notable character he does in the comics. Just trying to avoid rampant spoilers for people that haven't read the comics. I will say it's not the most exciting part of the episode, but I did love the fact that Barry gave her a ring. So many flash ring references in this episode. If the key that Eddie had given Iris had also been another ring, I would have just lost my shit. It would have been so hilarious. At various points in the comics, the flash ring has just served as a containment unit for Barry's in the Flash's suits, the different flashes. Professor Zoom also has one too. As we've seen though, Grant Gustin does not have a flash ring, or he has not gotten his yet. It's possible that they could do something different with the show and they could make the ring just a key, which actually paints a nice metaphor with the gifts that Eddie and Barry gave to Iris. The ring is a key. See how that works out? I think that also implies that Iris is going to be a point of contention coming up to the finale. She'll be a focal point for the Flash's battle with the reverse Flash, which is also something from the comics. So this is why you need to read the comics. It's all in there. It's all in Flash Rebirth. Number three, Tina McGee, Amanda Pays cameo. So if you didn't recognize her, Tina McGee was Amanda Pays, the actress who also starred in the original Flash show with John Wesley's ship. They've been really good about bringing actors from the original show back. They just cast Mark Hamill as the trickster on the show. He'll play an older version of his character, but he also played the trickster on the classic series. He and John Wesley Shipp were actually talking to each other on Twitter. It was really funny. Jedi Master coming to Central City. True to form, they give Dr. McGee this really awesome backstory. She's working at Mercury Labs, as in Max Mercury, also one of the speedsters. Part of the Flash family, that is. That's a nice Easter egg. I don't think that that's going to go anywhere. I think they gave the competing lab that name as an homage. I don't think we're going to see Max Mercury. Although it is possible we could see someone from his family. To be honest, really anything is possible. Arrow has stretched the limits with what it's done from the comics. The Flash has just blown right through that with superpowers. So we could totally see a lot of other members of the Flash family. They've already confirmed that Wally West is going to be a thing. But not for a while. Not for a long time. Number two, Firestorm is back and kicking ass. I think I mentioned it in my last video, but when he fought off the Reverse Flash, that's what his powers are going to look like. I'm sure he'll have a totally tricked out Star Labs costume that looks a little bit like it does in the comics. If Grant Gustin's Flash suit is any indication, they'll probably just make it a little more subtle. But as Harrison Wells said, 
on his life, they will bring Ronnie back, which sounds so much more awesome given the post credit scene. It just makes it sound so much more sinister. There's also the Caitlyn side of this too. It sets up that she's willing to break her morals, you know, bend any rule for Ronnie. Like that's how much she cares about him. So I'm really interested to see if she betrays the group at some point for Ronnie or to try and save Ronnie from something. Given the new dynamic with Harrison Wells now, it gets a lot more confusing. But think about it this way. Caitlyn Snow is so much more unpredictable now that she knows that Ronnie is alive. It adds this really awesome layer of complexity to Daniel Pennebaker's character. So I think she's going to have a lot more fun playing Caitlyn Snow in the back half of the season. If there's anything that The Flash has done really well, it's make really amazing, complex characters. Nothing is more frustrating than seeing a character that's stuck in the living room, so to speak. You know, like Barry said, I've been stuck in that living room ever since he killed my mother. Just as a side tangent, if all that talk about him visiting all those places around the Earth is any indication, he's probably going to do that, like in between seasons. He's probably going to run around and visit places. Back to Robbie Mel, though. So, yeah, he is totally messed up in his head. As far as we know, the only people inside there are Dr. Martin Stein and Ronnie Raymond's character. They've also cast Jason Rush, and they refer to something as the Firestorm program, something that Martin Stein was working on. I don't know how the Jason Rush character is going to work with Martin Stein and Ronnie Raymond. I don't know if they're all three going to be in there at the same time or not. I mean, we'll find out the next time we see them. We will see them again within the first couple episodes of the back half of the season. But really excited to see Robbie Mel on the show. He hasn't turned into much of a character so far. Like, he hasn't had much of a chance to stretch his acting muscles. So just wait till he gets some more scenes and gets to turn into a real character. Right, right now, he's more of a light show, so to speak. I know a lot of Tomorrow people are really excited to see him back, especially now that he can totally cameo on Arrow. And my number one moment, of course, Harrison Wells' post credit scene. A lot of you were asking me questions on Twitter about what it means with the flash ring and the reverse flash suit and the tachyon generator. So here's what I think is going on. Harrison Wells is an older version of Professor Zoom. Like it's the same person, but we're just seeing them at different points in their timeline. So the reverse flash that gets caught in the tachyon generator is just a younger version that has started the time travel loop. He's trying to affect history with the tachyon generator, which is why Harrison Wells jacks it onto his suit. But in order to make all those things possible, he has to preserve the timeline in a certain way. So that means that Grant Gustin has to become the Flash so that he can become Professor Zoom someday. That's why Wells killed Simon Stagg. He wants to protect Barry Allen so that he can grow up and do something, presumably, that leads to Professor Zoom, or Aobarthon, however you want to think about him, getting his powers. This is where I think we could possibly get into Hunter Zolomon territory, because it's possible that Eddie Thon is the father of Harrison Wells, or at least one of his progenitors. Harrison Wells seems like he's from way, way in the future, but based on the timeline in the newspaper, it's a little hard to tell how far in advance he is. He could be Eddie Thon's son, or he could be his grandson, or his great-great-great-great-great-grandson. They will answer that by the end of the season. The only part where it really does get confusing is, is if Harrison Wells is the older version of the character, of the Aobard Thon character, why does he need to go back in the loop if the younger one already did it? In my head, I'm thinking about it as like a recursive time loop. So we can work it out in bonus videos as we move forward. I'm sure they'll give us more information about it. They're pretty good about explaining things on the show. Let me know though, what was your favorite moment from the episode? And do you think Harrison Wells is like a child or great, great, great grandchild of Eddie Thawn? There are a couple possibilities. He could be a descendant of Grant Gustin. He has the flash ring, but Aobard Thawn also had a flash ring. Of all the theories that turned out to not be true, I love the idea that Gideon might be a version of Skeets and there might be some sort of booster gold Easter egg in there. Clearly, that has been proven to not be true, but I still like the idea. It is possible we could see Booster Gold at some point. Some really important moments that we need to remember, though. Eddie Thawne knows about metahumans. Probably going to find out that Barry is the Flash. They probably will develop a friendship, and then something crazy will happen with that love triangle that'll blow it up in their faces. It's possible they could push a Hunter Zolomon storyline for him into Season 2. I don't think that they'll wait that long. They've done a pretty good job of just delivering things like Gorilla Grodd, for instance. They didn't waste any time in rolling that out. So a lot of things happening really quickly. The rogues are coming back in the next episode, though. That's basically what the teaser is for the next episode, Rogue's Revenge, which is also a comic book storyline. If you want to learn all about it, just read Rogue's Revenge. It's a Jeff Johns story. Totally awesome. I think that took place during Final Crisis. I already mentioned most of the Easter eggs, but just one more about Max Mercury. When Harrison Wells said that they were rivals of us, the rival was one of the first reverse flashes. Max Mercury ended up taking him out, but also ended up dying in doing so. 
the rival ended up taking his persona and the speed force and just kind of disappearing into nothingness or disappearing to the speed force itself. So just nice references to the rival, the original Reverse Flash and Max Mercury. The other Easter egg is Flashpoint. Although time travel is a big part of Flash Rebirth, which is a completely different storyline that involves Barry's mother, Flashpoint is also a time travel story where Barry accidentally changes things and it goes really, really badly. They turned it into an animated movie, so you can totally check it out. It's just called Justice League Flashpoint. It's possible that they could turn that into like a season two thing. They could push things into a Flashpoint territory, which also involves Professor Zoom, the Professor Zoom version of the reverse Flash. It's like a very Tony Stark situation where the hero ends up causing the problem and then has to fix it himself. There was also the gift that Barry gave to Harrison Wells wrapped in a very blue looking wrapping paper. I just thought of it as cobalt blue wrapping paper. Cobalt Blue was another reverse Flash that was part of the Thawne lineage, but was actually a blood relative of Barry Allen. It gets timey-wimey, like he ended up getting raised by Thawne's, but genetically he was related to Barry Allen. Overall, I gave the episode a solid A. It was an amazing end to an amazing first half of the season. Of all the new comic book shows we've been getting this season, The Flash, I feel, has been the home run. Everything else is being judged by the benchmark that it's set. It is a little unfair just because the team from Arrow, the creative team, is the one that developed The Flash. And because Arrow is one of the most successful, if not the most successful, comic book show in recent memory, it just stands to reason that anything else that they would do would also be just as awesome. That doesn't mean that it's all perfect, but it means that they are head and shoulders beyond like what David Goyer and a lot of the other studios are doing. There are a whole lot of new comic book shows coming. I'm optimistic about some of them, cautiously optimistic about the rest. I am kind of worried about the Krypton one. One of the things I think this episode did really well, though, was deliver really big moments that were tied to really big character arcs. Like, it wasn't just a, a big reveal that they just rolled out. Like, they'd been developing Ronnie Raymond as a character, as this idea in Caitlin's head for a long time. So when we see the emotion on her face, it actually feels real. And then the payoff is just so much bigger when he rolls in like the cavalry to help Barry Allen. True, he's not much of a character yet, but that'll come in time. I think my favorite Grant Gustin moment was the scene he had with John Wesley Shipp. The man in yellow has taken enough from us. Do not let him take any more. So glad that they gave the original Flash or the original TV Flash that great moment. They really do take care of their stars. I'd say of all the characters that I'm most excited about, it's really the Eddie Thon character. They really waited a while to start using him. I think it was almost like the first four episodes before we saw him get some real moments. I mean, now we understand why. I mean, they're just slowly teasing this Thawn lineage out with the reverse flash. So excited to find out which direction they're going. Like I said, though, I mean, generally, just take Flash Rebirth as the baseline. They're going to modify things a little bit. They'll mix and match with New 52 elements. But generally, Flash Rebirth is the homework that you need to do if you want to learn about it in the comics. Arrow did this really awesome thing with the female characters, with the secondary female characters like Laurel and Thea this season that I'm hoping that it does with Candace Patton's character in the second half of the season. The only reason I haven't been a huge fan of her is just because she hasn't had the chance to get some real pathos. I mean, yeah, she's a blogger. She works at the coffee shop. Now that the love triangle is turning into a thing, I think we'll get some more interesting drama. Arrow is also kind of playing with the idea of the love triangle. As long as they don't lean on it too hard, I think it'll be interesting. It's mostly the Eddie Barry relationship that I think we'll be watching. Iris is just like the wheel around which they turn. And I just can't say enough about Tom Cavanaugh. He's just like the most amazing character on this show. I think I said in one of my older videos, you know, the only reason that actors like him who actually can lead their own shows take smaller roles like this is because they turn into much bigger roles, which obviously totally just happened. And in the process, he is also using his spare time to create genetically enhanced gorillas. Of all the antagonists in this new season of comic book TV, he is definitely the most fun to watch. So just some great sentimental character moments mixed in with some huge action set pieces and WTF reveals. Firestorm, gonna be so much awesome. Reverse Flash, can't wait to see more of him, especially with the Tachyon Generator. Faster than light travel, remember, that's time travel right there. So do not forget, big stuff happening tomorrow. Arrow, Raish Al Ghul. So if you haven't read that Batman comic that I keep talking about, it's the very first story to feature Ra's al Ghul in a Batman comic. So just read up on that. I think it's number 232. So I will post that video tomorrow. I'll try to post a bonus video just for Ra's al Ghul tomorrow too. Be sure to subscribe to get it. So in the meantime, new mobile links up here at the top in case you guys are watching on your mobile phone or your tablet. It's the same as the links I had over here, but click here to learn all about the reverse flash in the comics, like the history of the reverse flash, and click here to get ready for Arrow tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, so let's all flash ring fist bump each other into tomorrow's episode.